Hello and welcome to this video series on animal health and biosecurity brought to you by Farmers Weekly. I'm Janine Ryan, the editor of Farmers Weekly, and during this series we bring you experts in the fields of animal health and biosecurity to help you make better informed decisions on your livestock concerns. My guest today is Dr. Barry Mutamwemba from the ARC. Welcome. Thank you. So just to start off, could you just let us know what your role is at the ARC? Okay, so I'm a research veterinarian. Um, <clears throat> I'm a veterinarian by training, and then I ventured into um, research and diagnostics. So my position is mostly entails diagnostics of transboundary animal diseases. So by this, you're talking foot and mouth disease, African swine fever, and other diseases that are di uh, differentials of these diseases. Um, we also do research in vaccines, and vaccine, uh, we also do vaccine production. Um, so in a nutshell, that's uh, my involvement within the Agriculture Research Council. So in terms of um, sheep and goat diseases or small stock diseases, I think pulpy kidney um, is one of the most economically important diseases. Could you just explain what that disease is? Okay, so pulpy kidney is actually, I don't like the term pulpy kidney because it actually explains or describes what happens at the end when the disease has taken um, its effect. But um, I'm more um, comfortable using the term enterotoxemia. So this is a disease that is caused by Clostridium perfringens type D. So Clostridium perfringens has got many different uh, types depending on the toxins that they produce. So this particular one, it produces a toxin called epsilon. So it is referred to as type D. So enterotoxemia, when you break down the word, entero meaning related to the intestines, toxemia, the tox, I mean tox, the toxin that is produced or the poison that is produced, and emia, the last part, means uh, it enters the blood. So it is a poison from the uh, gut that finds its way into the blood and causes havoc, um, and in most cases ends up uh, killing the animal. Um, so it is quite um, a, a, a huge disease when it comes to uh, production systems, um, especially when we have animals moving from um, to more um, or better um, systems, for example, coming from pasture into lush grass or into um, feedlots where they are receiving concentrates. So what happens is the gut by its nature is designed to keep um, this, uh, um, so if I may take you back a little bit, Crocidium perfringens, it is a normal gas, uh, I mean gut bacteria. So it exists in the gut for, as a normal uh, um, commensal, if I'm to put it that way, causing no disease. But it's only when there are conditions that uh, pushes, uh, that uh, make the growth of Crocidium go much higher and um, pushing the bacteria to produce more toxin that it becomes uh, tox um, poisonous or kills the animal. So under normal circumstances, a normal animal, if you open it, it contains uh, Clostridium perfringens. But it's only when the environment of the gut changes, that's when um, there's overgrowth of the uh, bacteria, and then the bacteria produces this epsilon uh, toxin which is the one that then gets into the uh, blood and gets into um, different systems causing uh, uh, the disease. So uh, in a nutshell, that's uh, Clostridium uh, perfringens. So that's basically how uh, the uh, toxins, the Clostridium perfringens toxins um, end up uh, causing uh, the different uh, clinical signs that we see in the animal. And in terms of blue tongue, I know that's another economically important disease of um, small stock. Could you just perhaps also elaborate on what that disease is? So blue tongue um, is quite different from um, uh, pulpy kidney. Blue tongue is a non-contagious uh, disease, so it doesn't spread from animal to animal use, uh, by direct contact. So what normally happens is there is um, those biting midges, they bite an infected animal and then they come to an in-contact uh, susceptible animal and when they do their feeding and their biting, that's when they transmit the disease. So it causes the disease by uh, 
destroying uh, peripheral uh, blood capillaries, which causes um, exudation or fluids to come out of the blood capillaries and causing hemorrhages as well. So with um, um, the clinical signs that you see, you mostly see the animal starts being feverish and um, this leads to the animal not eating and eventually losing coordination and uh, becoming re recumbent. Um, it also destroys muscles of the neck. That's when you see sometimes the animal presents with a twisted neck and the eyes are quite uh, uh, swollen and the tongue turns initially reddish and uh, eventually they turn um, bluish. This hence the name blue tongue and also has um, erosions on the tongue and it also affects the feet, uh, the hooves. So in the end, the animal becomes recumbent and can't, it can't eat, it can't uh, walk and just uh, lies there until uh, death and uh, usually superfins. So what, what is the mortality rate of these diseases? Are they both quite likely to result in the death of the animal? Um, when it comes to pulpy kidney, it does um, kill and it does kill uh, especially those well-conditioned animals. So if you look in the head and um, the ones that normally die are the very well-conditioned animals and in a head of a uh, hundred, you might actually go to as far as 50% uh, of those animals uh, dying and it works uh, pretty fast. Um, so sometimes what you see is you fed your animals and the next day you find dead animals. And with um, um, blue tongue, it does cause um, varying de degrees of um, uh, death depending on the age and also the uh, breed of uh, sheep that we, we're dealing with. Um, but it, is, it also causes a lot of um, um, abortions, especially when it affects uh, sheep that are in their early trimester of uh, pregnancy. So because blue tongue is, is spread by midges, it's, I think you said it's not a contagious disease, so an animal can't give it to another animal. Yes. But um, what, would, what would the disease spread depend on? So we cannot control uh, midges. So they are all over and sometimes they get blown by wind for long distances. And if those midges had fed on animals that are infected, and then they come into your stock, which is clean or not infected, they can easily um, get infected. So the target is either to um, take out the animals away from the midges or to get rid of the midges. And what age animals are more susceptible? All ages of animals are, are very susceptible and um, Deaths normally occur in the uh, younger animals and uh, pregnant ewes tend to abort, especially in the first uh, trimester of pregnancy. Does that also apply to pulpy kidney? Pulpy kidney, it also affects, uh, because what you just need with pulpy kidney is moving from um, high roughage diets to these high grain diets, which really changes the environment of um, of the, of, of the intestine. So it doesn't really need to be a, a particular age. As long as you have moved, shifted the diet from uh, um, mostly pasture-based to concentrate-based uh, diet, then you can, uh, the animals can be susceptible to pulpy kidney. So if I am a farmer and I suspect that one of my animals has either pulpy kidney or blue tongue, what are the procedures? What are the first steps I should take? So um, with pulpy kidney, you obviously notice maybe there's a sudden change of um, diet. And it's mostly this change from a very um, high roughage based diet to these concentrates. That's when these um, changes in the um, intestinal um, flora okay, leading to the overgrowth of Clostridia and consequent um, overgrowth of, um, I mean, overproduction of these toxins. So you have to obviously take the animals off um, that, those concentrates or the lush grass and take them back to, um, the, the, to pasture. 
and do gradual introduction of either lush pasture or the concentrates so that the uh, flora of the stomach gets used and adopts um, gradually. If you do sudden change, then you run, you're likely to run into problems. But if you do a gradual change, the flora also gradually changes and um, it won't really cause any, any problem. So that's uh, on, on, on pulpy kidney. When it comes to uh, blue tongue, blue tongue is caused by um, uh, biting midges, like it's transmitted by uh, biting midges rather. Um, so you either have to do one of the two, either take the animals away from the source, for example, um, take them from the flay and put them in enclosed places where um, it's proofed against uh, these midges, or just find measures to dip the animal with a, a dip that is uh, fly repellent, or alternatively deal with the culicoides itself, the, 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 the midges, uh, find ways of getting rid of uh, uh, the, the vector, which is the, the biting uh, midges. So that's uh, how best the farmer can actually start uh, controlling. Because if you don't, for example, with um, pulpy kidney, if you don't withdraw the animals, and you're likely going to lose quite a number of those animals from pulpy kidney. And with um, blue tongue, if you don't withdraw the um, either the animals or deal with the source, the, um, I mean the, um, the vector, which is the biting midges, then you're likely to have more and more animals affected. And the other aspect that maybe I might have omitted is the those animals that are sick, that are affected, they need to be separated from the rest of the animals because once the midges come again, they feed on these ones and then they transmit to the um, susceptible ones. So that separation is quite important. And are either of these controllable or notifiable diseases? So um, uh, um, blue tongue is a notifiable disease, um, but uh, Clostridium prefingens is, is not. So that means that you have to inform the state veterinarian if you have a suspected case? Yes, when you have a suspected case of um, blue tongue, you have to inform the, um, your local veterinarian, your state veterinarian, who, if not present, then you have to escalate it to the director level. But it has to be reported to, to the state. What are some prevention strategies that farmers can employ? So with the uh, pulpy kidney, um, like I mentioned earlier, there needs to be um, more strategy when it comes to your management uh, practice on the farm. So for example, um, vaccination is top of the uh, list. You need to vaccinate strategically um, before you do certain procedures such as uh, deworming and also before the animals are moved from um, pasture onto concentrate or onto lush grass. Um, so vaccination tend to uh, greatly reduce the uh, chances of the animal succumbing to uh, pulpy kidney. Um, so the other, or going to um, blue tongue, blue tongue vaccination is also uh, quite important, but uh, that has to be done strategically as well. Um, just before the rainy season, uh, that's when the culicoides are going to build up. Um, the animals need to be vaccinated. Um, when you do, when you are breeding, the ewes also have to be vaccinated at specific times before uh, the breeding starts. Otherwise, uh, the vaccine will also have its own issues on the, on, on, on the reproduction of the animal. Um, and also managing the, 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 the vector, which is the midges, um, either find dips that um, re are resistant, I mean, that are uh, fly repellent, or just get rid of the sources where these uh, midges are likely to, to multiply. And they multiply mostly in flays. In flays, in water, in water standing that water. is standing, yeah. Mm. yeah. Is there any ongoing research at the ARC in terms of diagnostics that's ongoing with regard to these two diseases? So I think I'll answer the question broadly by saying we have a program that is specifically designed or its task is to look into the questions that arises from the field. For example, if we have a problem with uh, the vaccine in the field, 
uh, seems not to be working effectively. We uh, have our teams that will look at where the problem is with the vaccine and how best to uh, come up with a better vaccine. And also coming up with uh, new and uh, more effective um, vaccines. So we're trying to move away from these old generations to this new generation uh, type of vaccine. So there is a big team that works on almost all the critical diseases that um, are in livestock within South Africa. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you for watching this episode. Happy farming.